We are live. Oh man, that this listen technology is happening quickly now. Yeah, it is. It's Hi, everybody. Around here. I like your hair. You look like a lion today. A lioness. Lion, lion, lioness. The trick is you just don't brush it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I do with my teeth. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh my! I got a teeth cleaning yesterday. The best feeling in the world. I got a cle cleaning too, and they said, "When's the last time you got your teeth cleaned?" I said, mm, six years ago." No. Yeah. Who needs cleaning? Oh my gosh. Well, you might be finding yourself at the dentist <laughs> <laughs> soon. That's all I'll have to say. I was at the dentist with the cavity. That's why they started. When you need dentures, we'll be like, don't you wish you got a teeth cleaning? <laughs> I could be, do a commercial. I could do a commercial. I usually get a teeth cleaning. <laughs> Every six years. I brush and do all that stuff yeah. and floss, and, but then, you know. Anyway, we should move on. Anywho. Nobody wants to hear us talk about teeth cleaning. I know. Well, it's been a minute since you've been around. I know. I've been two weeks off. Two weeks off, and we had School of the Prophets, which was oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. Three weeks total from here. Yeah, and you just went to uh, Phoenix, right? Yeah, so beautiful. Oh, I, look if you were at, in Phoenix, you guys are beautiful there. Loved, I love being there. I love Arizona. So good. It's a, it's a beautiful state. Beautiful. So, you guys, today we, we are back to Come the on. basics. We back are basics. doing a live Q&A. We knew so, you missed us. I know. Did you do anything while I was gone on here? Live? Not me. Oh, okay. But did you guys join us for Lindsay Ryman and Dana McCollum's live on Facebook? Oh, yeah, that's right. Anybody? They were amazing. I watched it. They were incredible. Yeah. They were awesome. That was a really great live. So, that's all that happened while you were gone. Two smart people. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really great. Um, I didn't think they were as entertaining as we are, though. <laughs> they come to us for a good time, and they go to them to actually, actually learn something. Learn something. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, okay, but as usual, you can share any questions that you have in the comments. We'll try to get to them, and we will try our very best to get to them. And people are giving you all sorts of dentist <laughs> tips and tricks uh, in the comments. Are they? I can't yeah. see that far. You need to go uh. to the dentist at least once a year. Oh, okay. Well, I, now my dentist said every six months, so that's... Very cleaning. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Well, look at these blessings from Mexico, from Omaha. All these beautiful places. Baja, Mexico. Well, lots of people from Mexico today. I love, I love Mexico. I think I could move there. <laughs> We might like send you there. Someday. I know. Some missionary. <laughs> Seriously. Um, amazing. Someone says, come back to the UK again, Chris. I want to. Hey, I'm vaccinated. I can travel anywhere I want. Look at you. Wide open Freedom. doors. Freedom. Wide open doors now, for you. We're going to get a bunch of anti vax people know, on there now. Hey, okay. You're an anti vax person, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, let's just have this conversation <laughs> live for the go. whole world. <laughs> Okay, and the first question we have for you today is... <laughs> inappropriate, I'm sorry. It was inappropriate. It was like a family dinner <laughs> question, <laughs> not live. Okay, I'm really in quick today. Okay, favorite thing... I like this question. Oh, gosh. What's your favorite color? I feel like like I'm an energizer. <laughs> okay, you are. Morning. You drank too okay. much coffee this morning. Favorite thing that has happened this year? Oh, my favorite thing that's happened yeah. this year? Oh, I've had lots of favorite things happen this year. It, I know. I got a brand new Corvette that I ordered. That was the dream. It's beautiful. It's really mm -hmm. beautiful. That was so cool. And I, mm -hmm. I, it's like, you know, I'm a car guy, so that was kind of cool. Yes. Kathy shot a, a bear last week with a bow. So fun. 400-pound bear from 70 yards. That was one of my favorite things. She came back just, like, glowing. Mm. It was really amazing. We just had another another grandchild. Yes, Liam. And Liam. That was, and then in the last, over the last year, we had two grandchildren with mm. my, uh, Malachi. Malachi, you had a great grandchild. Yeah, great grandchild. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Thanks. It's for, confusing. You have so many grandkids. I, and then I don't even know what, what your title is. I know. Is. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's all been really a lot of fun. And we've actually had, you know, we have very challenging things happen every day here. That's mm -hmm. what they pay me the big money for. <laughs> the big and I know you can't, I can't complain because if they didn't have these big problems, they wouldn't need me. Mm. But we always have challenges. But That's we just, true. we've had just a great year. We just had School of Prophets, which is the most well-attended mm -hmm. School of Prophets we've ever had. It was so fun. 
Bethel School of Technology, which we started five years ago, had the largest enrollments it ever had. Really? Last week, 70, oh, wow. 60 something, almost 70 people enrolled for, and they enroll like every other month. They do enrollments every oh, other month. Oh, okay. So uh, that was Continue. a huge enrollment. And yeah. um, school ministry starting, actually third year start already. Mm-hmm. So it's just nice to have students back in classrooms and just, it's just, so good. it's been good. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be passionate in your prophetic words coming? Oh, sorry. Patient in your prophetic words coming to pass. I mean, like this is everyone's question, right? It's like, mm-hmm. how do you stay patient <laughs> while waiting for something? Well, I, I think patience is important. I also think preparation is important. Mm-hmm. So I think that I think the Lord. Uh, I think I think so much of the realization of the prophetic declaration comes from preparation. Mm-hmm. So I think that when you prepare, you can shorten the time. Really? Well, let me say this. Maybe the Lord has an allocated time. You can lengthen the time. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Let me give you scripture. Say, mm-hmm. children of Israel are supposed to go. We use this all the time, yeah. right? Children of Israel are supposed to go in the promised land. Yeah. It's 40-day journey yeah. from from uh, Canaan. I'm sorry. From Egypt to Canaan is mm-hmm. 40 days you know, walking at 1.5 miles an hour. It's a 40-day journey. Right. It took them 40 years. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb finally get in 40 years later. Right. But my point is that le- the length of their process was directly determined by the heart of their content. Hmm. They didn't believe. Right. So, you know, it was no, there's no way God wanted them to be in 40 years later. Right. So, you know, it, it, depending on how you look at it, like you look at it from future present, you're like, okay, well, you can't really shorten the amount of time because mm-hmm. God, God's allotted, let's say, 40 days. And you're like, I want it done in 20. No. Yeah. But... You can lengthen the time. Mm-hmm. So I think that so much, sometimes our waiting is that we're not prepared, like we're not increasing our capacity hmm. to meet the to meet the prophetic yeah. requirements. Yeah, like sometimes you just you get a prophetic for word, and then you kind of just like twiddle your fingers waiting for it to happen. Yeah. When in fact there's some action you have to take. There's partnership mm-hmm. in the prophetic. Let's say the Lord says, you know, I'm going to bring you your mate. Soon, mm-hmm. you know, we we got you. We know soon is is a little different than because the Lord said I'll be back soon, and it's twenty two thousand years, and still right. not soon, right? It doesn't seem soon to us. But my point is, is that instead of sitting back and waiting for your, you know, your your husband, your wife to come along, you prepare yourself for marriage. Yeah, like you do what you can do to be ready. Yeah, and you know that might be everything from. Going to, you know, reading a book on, on marriage to, mm-hmm. you know, preparing your heart to becoming responsible to asking yourself what, you know, what kind of man, what kind of woman are you looking for? Yeah. And it might even include dating, you know, it might even include, you know. Meeting people. Meeting people, going right. places where there's healthy people. Right. Coming to school ministry, which is the best place to meet someone in the yeah. whole world. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. It is. <laughs> and, uh you know that sort of, that sort of thing, right? So I think that preparation is important, and it often shortens the process. Right, it's good. Yes, it's great. That's great, a good great. word, actually. I, it is a good word. Man, it's a come good back question. From vacation and see how the mind was just. <laughs> it was sharp. <laughs> you just needed a bit of a break. <laughs> okay, somebody. There's lots of questions in the there's comments. There's more coming too. Look at I know. This. There's all these questions coming in. So somebody asked. Actually, a couple of people asked questions in regards to tongues, speaking in tongues. Uh-huh. So he says, does speaking in tongues happen automatically or is hearing sounds in my heart the same thing? And the second question, well, let's answer that question and we'll jump into the no, second I, I question. No, I think, I, I don't like the word automatic, but it, it happens by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, I think it happens different different ways for different people. Mm-hmm. Like, like God is not a one experience fits all kind of yeah. God, right? So. Right. For, you know, for Kathy, like, when she got prayed for when she was, uh, let's see, I was 18, she had 15. Mm-hmm. She got prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And she literally, like, they've laid hands on her, and she just, like... Was out. And she's <laughs> never been to a, a charismatic church, and she just started, you know, yada ba shoot about the, like, flowing out of her, right? And right. nothing happened to me for over a year. And then once, uh, one morning, I was praying in the morning, like, I, you know, it was, it was kind of my discipline. I was praying in the morning for some things, and I literally found myself... 
speaking in a language that I did I didn't know. Wow. And it wasn't you know what was there was it no, out of this like even trying. No. Yeah. I was just and, and it wasn't out of a uh, an experience either because mm-hmm. I wasn't like having this like well the glory came down it was just like mm-hmm. and I was just like Lord you know I pray for John and I I just pray for and I'm like oh whoa what is that you know. Mm-hmm. And so I think that it can happen multiple different ways. Totally. Uh, I, I think that it's by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, though, and it is a language of men and angels. I yeah. was laying on the floor in uh, Round Mountain, Nevada, and I was just praying. I was it, was it was before service, so there was just a few people in the sanctuary. Yeah. And I was just laying on my face, and I was praying for the service quietly but out loud. Yeah. And and and, and I began to pray in the spirit. And afterwards, a, a man came up to me and he said, "Wow, you speak Hebrew." I said, "I don't. I actually don't barely speak English." <laughs> and he said, "Oh, well, you were saying in perfect Hebrew." He was, and he shared a phrase that I was repeating. Wow. And he he was actually he he actually spoke Hebrew. Mm. So you know, I think that uh, it comes by the unction of the Holy Spirit. It comes different ways. Sometimes people just get this overwhelming experience. Right. You know, I was in the glory, and all of a sudden, this tongue. And, and then other people just comes like so naturally. And, right. and I'd say, you know, you, you ask for the gift of the Spirit, you pray, you, you ask in faith, and you uh, move in, 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 in hope and faith. And, mm-hmm. and the Lord will definitely give it to you. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So second part to this question is, how do you handle tongues and interpretation of tongues at Bethel? Maybe some like... Pro- I don't have a lot of interpretation of tongues. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not, it hasn't been really instilled in our culture and you know we've actually talked about it a couple times over the years Mm -hmm. because um you know in weaverville in the early days in weaverville somebody would speak in tongues and of course in a public meeting uh if if you know it's one thing for everyone to worship in tongues together right or you know together like we're praying and people are like yes lord and you know there's there's 50 people all praying in tongues together uh, in the spirit, right? Yeah. But when someone stands up and gives a message in tongues, mm-hmm. uh, you know, First Corinthians fourteen requires that there's an interpretation. Right. And what we have is uh, we have a lot of uh, messages, uh, just prophetic messages without the tongue and interpretation. Mm-hmm. And I think it's been such a part of our com- uh, our. I think it's I think that way of hearing messages from the Lord has become such a part of our culture. That and there's just been no exercise or faith for prophecy, prophecies, or can I say messages from the Lord that that have a tongue and interpretation. And I I think it'd be beautiful if we did start to mm. initiate that, begin to pray into that, and have faith for it. But yeah. it just doesn't happen much. And it used to in Weirville, um, mm-hmm. in in the early days, we there would be a tongue and interpretation, but it doesn't happen much. Yeah, here. yeah. I remember having this question when I was in school of ministry. Uh huh. I think it came up a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it in comes Q&A. up. A, comes up a lot. I, but I remember being in a, what do we call them? Like a uh, AMT. Yeah. Like so, that's like an advanced ministry training, like an yeah. elective course. And I don't even remember what the course was about. But there was a session or a day that we took, and we practiced preaching or speaking in tongues yeah. in front of the class and then somebody practiced interpreting the tongue. Oh, that's great. And it was so interesting because I actually had never experienced that or mm-hmm. seen that done, but it's so so powerful to see, oh my oh my goodness, mm-hmm. there, it's the, there's so no. much there's so much you can can do and say from just speaking in tongues because pers- personally mm-hmm. tongues was such a personal mm-hmm. thing between me and the Lord. But all of a sudden, it becomes a corporate thing, and it's so powerful. When it's, it's translated, interpreted. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. really, really powerful. But it can be intimidating because, oh my gosh, did I really hear? And is this really what they're what they were yeah. saying? And all the things. So yeah. it was cool to get feedback. It's important, and you know. No one asked this question, but it's gift of interpretation, not translation. Mm-hmm. So sometimes the tongue can right. be, you know, like let's say a minute, interpret, or let's say two minutes, and. The, Interpretation can be, you know, That's really twenty good. seconds. You know, yeah. it often like when you're if if anyone's ever you know preached in another language, like you, I'm getting. I mean, you're preaching in another country where you're being translated, right? You know, often you know I'll preach, you know, and I'll say a line, and then the translator will translate like five lines. Yeah. 
And I'm like, wow, that's to, so it is, it's interpretation, not translation. That's really good. Yeah. That's, yeah, that really makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. You ready for the I don't know. Uh, um, somebody's asked, is it possible for someone to have two offices given to them by Jesus? Well, oh boy, we've had this, we answered this question a couple times over the years. Hmm. But, you know, so it, it takes a calling, a gifting, and an anointing to have a ministry. Mm-hmm. So your calling gives your identity, right. your gifting gives your ability, and your anointing gives your purpose. Mm-hmm. So what we're asking with the off, so, so the gift of prophecy, for example, is a gift. Mm-hmm. It's not my identity, it's what, it's what I do by the gifting of the Holy Spirit. Right. But the office of a prophet, for example, is a calling. Mm-hmm. It's not what I do, it's who I am. Mm-hmm. And everybody has multiple calls. For, for example, you're a wife. Mm-hmm. That's not just something you do, it's something you are. Mm-hmm. And someday you'll be a mother. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's I'm wife, a mother. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, you're, 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 you're also a saint, so that's a calling. Right. So, um, so you know, the, some people would think that you could be like a prophet and a teacher, or you could be an apostle and a prophet. I personally think that on the fivefold side, that my my personal opinion is you have a call, hmm. and now, but that you that you could be multiple gifted. For example, the right. only uh, the only call that I've ever had from the Lord, like where the Lord actually spoke to me and said, "I've called you to be a prophet to the nations," he he's never anointed me as uh, he's never called me a teacher, an apostle, an evangelist, um, right. or a pastor. He's never called me. He personally has never right. called me that. But I do operate, at, you know, I teach mm-hmm. and, and I, of course, I evangelize and I um, I also pastor a lot of people. Um, but I, I would see that my call, my fivefold call is prophet. And then these are things that I receive grace from other people right. and, and from the Lord, from, from the Lord through other people. Yeah. That's the way I would see it. I, it's not an argument to me. I don't mm-hmm. love titles anyway, so mm-hmm. I mean, why not? I mean, in in yeah. my in this place, no one calls me Prophet Chris and mm-hmm. Apostle Bill. You know, I I, I think that it, you know I don't think it's a real argument. Mm-hmm. I think just you know I think it's important for the sake of conversation, yeah. maybe. But yeah, if somebody wants to say, you know, what what I dislike and probably what I'm re- reacting to a little bit is. Once, you know, I, you have people, I mean, I had somebody come up in our school of prophets, like, I'm an apostle and a prophet. And I'm like, mm. uh, it, is, is it necessary for you to identify yourself as that? Unless you're, there's a teaching lesson or there's, mm. you know, if you receive a prophet, the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet's award. Yeah. There might be a time when it's important for the person to know your identity so that they can have that level of expectation. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, you know, I don't think people should be walking around and put it on their cards or, you know, <laughs> whatever. You know, it's, it just feels a little bit, it feels a little corny really, but. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. That's my personal view. I understand the African-American community has a very different uh, perspective. I've been, you know, you know, I love that culture. Mm-hmm. And it's very common for them to use a title, apostle or uh, a prophet, prophet. and, and I, I'm not demeaning that at all. I, I, that's not our culture, so totally. Yeah, that's great. Okay, um, somebody's asked, "How do you rekindle a fire with the Lord after many years of being mellow, or you feel have backslidden from where you were?" Why don't you share a little bit? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. You got your lioness. Uh, yeah, it's coming for you. <laughs> main on the main. <laughs> I was thinking, so how do you rekindle? I was even thinking for this for myself because there's totally times when you just mm-hmm. don't feel it, right? Yeah, like exactly. Sometimes you're like, where's the passion I once <laughs> felt, though the love is still there because yeah. that's the choice that I've made. Of course. But I think obviously it feels so good to to feel passionate, to yeah. feel on fire, right? And we want to keep our fire burning, right? So I think sometimes when I have felt like, oh, I've really, I'm just really not feeling it. And what has happened? I just don't, where is God and all the things. I go back to a place where I knew that that's where I had met him before. Oh, that's good. And so even I'm thinking more recently. talking about like a geographic location or you're talking about more Mm, heart stance? More like a heart stance or more like Mm. where's a scripture? Like Oh, there we go. Yeah. Recently, 
I there w- there was a season when I was in high school I just could not get enough of the Bible like oh my goodness I would just read it incessantly and specifically Exodus like the the book of Exodus for oh, some wow. reason I just I just loved it was just so much history and you just great were, stories too, yeah, yeah good stories and so recently it's so funny I found myself back re- in reading in Exodus and you know obviously the journey of the promised land and I just was reminded of that same feeling of the first time I was reading these stories and they felt very real to me. And I was like, oh, it feels sentimental. It feels like I've been taken back to this place where it was, this was all that's that mattered. Beautiful. So maybe that's going to a scripture. Maybe that's going to a geographical location. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a heart space or how did you used to spend your quiet times or I don't know. There's definitely kind of do definitely the deed you did it first kind of thing, right? Yeah. First love kind of idea. Yeah. I also think that if you're a wet log, being on a hot fire really helps. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that ha- being around people that are on fire. Yeah, it does help. Oh, man, it really makes a huge difference. Mm-hmm. And then the one thing we've talked about it a few times in, in these conversations is like writing down the things you're thankful for and yeah. pressing into those things. I was just rereading my list. I think what I had eighty seven or something the yes, last time we looked. Looking at it. And and I think that, you know, re- refreshing my memory, which is a little bit of what you're saying mm-hmm. in the past, you know, refreshing my memory uh over the, the where the Lord has intervened yeah. really helps to like break that callous heart and yeah, start good. to like bring faith to, to you know, back to the game. It's good. Mm-hmm. So I'd say just what you shared, like going back to those places. Uh, being with people that are on fire. Yeah, it's, that's really Cultivating helpful. a thankful heart. Yeah. Doing the deeds you did at first, whether it's reading the scripture mm-hmm. or praying or spending time in church. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I love that. You have to do the opposite of what you feel like. Because like, when you feel dead, you don't feel like going to church, right? For mm-hmm. example. Because you're mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be around a whole bunch of people who are on fire. And I'm just and I'm faking feel guiltier. it. Yeah. <laughs> but the very thing I need to get on fire is people who are on fire. So I have to kind of press through the whatever that is, shame or bad habits or whatever. And yeah. Get back to a place of fellowship. Yeah. Totally. That's really good. Okay. Taking it a bit of a turn here. Okay. So let's see what you have to say about this one. Oh, gosh. How do you navigate dating when in different places spiritually? That's all the context we have, so. <laughs> well, you're the date lady. No. I, you've written whole books on this. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think it's important that this is the yoked question, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I... Man, I have so many opinions about this, and it's really hard when you don't have people in front of you. I know. It's a bit tricky. So you're trying to share principles. But, you know, what you don't, you you know, you don't want to have to de- um, reduce your relationship with God to mm-hmm. be in a relationship with a person. It's really good. Because as soon as you do that, you've made that person an idol. Mm-hmm. And then God's actually, not only is he not blessing that relationship, He's actually working to derail that relationship because you have an idol. Mm. For example, if uh, if I'm if I'm loving God and my boyfriend wants me to move in with him, and he's like he's gonna break up with me if I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm like I have to break my value system. I, I have to break my covenant with God. Yeah. To actually do what my boyfriend wants or my girlfriend, right? It could yeah. be either way. I'm like am. It, can I can I say I'm following Christ mm-hmm. when I'm disobeying Him to have a relationship with this girl or this guy? Right. I'm like, no. So you know, and what you know, uh, an idol is anything I have to check with before I say yes to God. Yeah, it's powerful. So you know, people say this all the time. It's like I'm following God, and I'm like, you're following God. You're in a sexual relationship outside of marriage, which mm-hmm. God tells you not to do. Mm-hmm. I, and I'm not shaming them. I'm simply saying. You can't, you you had to break, you were willing to break your virtues mm-hmm. to actually have a relationship with a human. Yeah. And whenever you have to do that, I'd say you just put a target on that relationship mm. in which the Lord goes, the best thing for you is for you not to have that relationship. Yeah. Because you actually, you actually had to reduce your relationship with me to have a relationship with them. Yeah. So, you know, I think I think those things are important. Like, I, I wouldn't want to be dating somebody 
who didn't have the same virtues and values I have. That's good. Whether they be morally or spiritually, right? Yeah, right. Because ultimately the Lord's not going to bless that relationship. And ultimately relationships work. All relationships have challenges and relationships work uh-huh. because there's a third person in the fire, so to speak. Totally. So. Totally. Yeah, I wouldn't want that. You you might have some other wisdom or insight into that. Yeah, probably similar thoughts. I think something that else is that's, that is coming to mind is I think sometimes you might or people might find themselves in a relationship because they think that they are going to be able to lead this person into a greater depth of yeah. relationship with the Lord or I'm going to walk whatever. in sin with them so yeah. I can lead them to Christ. So I can sort of it's the fix them. And I would say, I don't know if I often see it going that way. You yeah. often see it going the other the direction. Other direction yeah. And then similarly, then you have to ask yourself, well, what made me, co- what caused me to compromise? Because you'll continue to compromise even if you end this relationship, if you don't figure out the root of why you compromised the first time. Yeah. So going back to figure out why did I decide it was okay to bend my values, put an idol in my life. If that's not what I intended to do, what is the root of this? What's my, what's the fear? Why am I coping in this way? Totally. And figuring that out. However, I think sometimes people might just feel like, oh, I just feel maybe you're both Christians, but mm-hmm. the depth of your walk with the Lord, maybe you've been a Christian your whole life and this person's a new Christian. I think mm-hmm. some, sometimes that's just, that's the case. And you might see somebody that's been a Christian for five days that has greater faith than, than you do. There's just, a, there's a bit mm-hmm. of a growing process that yeah, happens in that person's life. So I don't think it's necessarily all bad if you're at different oh, levels. Yeah. It point. just depends on the, um, maybe even the drive or the, the, the love for the Lord that you see growing in that person. Do you see continual fruit coming from yeah. their life? Or, yeah, that would be my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, and that's little. That's quite different than being equally yoked. It just means that we're on, we're different places on the road. Totally. Like I've been on that road for three years. You've been on the road for three months. Yeah. And you're, you know, you're loving the Lord, and you're catching up, and you're learning yeah, and, and growing. You're growing. But, but at this place of our in, uh, intersection, you're not where I'm at right now. Yeah. And that that's a different thing. You're not like asking me to break my values and virtues and to you know to have a relationship with you. You're just simply saying I don't understand that, and I'm, I'm mm-hmm. and I get an opportunity to maybe help help bring you up in into that place. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, I think we have time for maybe a few more questions. Um, somebody has asked. This is such an interesting question. You've talked about this a lot. So, how do you practically fight or battle an attack? From the spirit of Jezebel. Intense question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think First uh, Kings nineteen is a great uh, eighteen and nineteen. That that is the uh, the actual scripture about Jezebel, mm-hmm. and she creates uh, fear, I- irrational fear. So, what is the Jezebel spirit? Well, let me say that I think that if you if we're and we're taking this from the scripture. Yeah. So you know, it, Elijah. Uh, has the greatest victory of his life in First uh, First uh, Kings eighteen, and in First Kings nineteen, Jezebel says, "I'm going to kill you," and he's just killed four hundred fifty prophets of Baal. Of course, this is an Old Testament example, mm-hmm. and he's afraid of one woman, right? And he ends up in a cave, and God uh, encounters him in the cave, and through an audible uh, exchange, yeah. God says to him, "What are you doing?" And he said, "I am alone and left, and they come to kill. They come to kill me, and they've killed all the prophets. And the truth is, the day before, Elijah is the one who killed the false yeah, prophets, and actually all of Israel turned to the Lord in one mm-hmm. day. And so, you know, it's so. What is a Jezebel spirit? We should say it's irrational fear. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's a uh, a fantasy perspective in mm-hmm. which." Uh, the real, I lose it touch. Your, it confuses you. Yeah, I lose touch with reality. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, he wants to take his own life. Suicide. Yeah, he asks God to kill him. So mm-hmm. it's su- suicidal spirit. And I, w- I would say it's uh, isolation. Yeah. And and probably deep depression. Mm-hmm. And when I, especially when I have those things all working together, I'm like, wow, this feels like spirit. Wow. Doesn't feel human. Real confusing. Yeah. yeah, and so what do I do? You know, uh, God prescribed two things for Elijah, which is interesting. He yes. said, "Get back to your ministry uh-huh. and and get back to and and get back to your community. Your community. Yeah, make community. Those were the two things that he gave that uh-huh. he said to Elijah. 
And so I would say, uh, you know, one of the things that really helps fellowship is uh, listed as a weapon of warfare. Yep. So I think um, don't withdraw from your from your your, your uh, faith community. That's good. And secondly, you know, get back to your your uh, place of ministry. So good. And then you know, and then I would also say things like you know, the practical things like reading the scripture, repeating them, find a place of thankfulness, which we've talked about over and over, mm-hmm. remembering the prophecies over you, remembering the testimonies behind you. Yeah. And um uh, and 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 praying those things and then, you know, obviously Declaring. worship, all yeah. those kind of things really help. So good. And it's so true being around people because exactly mm-hmm. spirit wants to pull you into isolation the very place where those things feel so magnified and so real <sighs> but if you come into community and you share vulnerably about what you're feeling it's all of a sudden those things that have been taunting you in your mind for yeah. so long are put in their put in their place and replaced with truth from people that you really trust isn't it interesting oftentimes that spirit wants to isolate you and says to you, mm-hmm. if you tell anyone, they'll think they'll you're think, crazy. Yeah, they'll think you're crazy. And then the deal is, when you Something's finally do tell you. somebody, and they go, oh, I've had that happen. Like, it feels like, I don't know if it left, but it's just like, you actually had this happen too? Oh, yeah, you know, two years ago, I was in that same situation, and I felt like I was going crazy, or I was going to do something crazy, or I was having panic attacks. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, man, I, you know, I prayed through it, and it lasted, da-da-da. And, and, and they're like, oh, well, if she had that happen and she's not crazy then yeah. i'm not crazy and there's just power in just agreement it's so good yeah it's so so good okay last question of the day here we go the back be- the best book you'd recommend about dreams well anything by james gall is going to be amazing mm-hmm. uh, he's a friend of mine um and i can't say specifically uh which book but james j-a-m-e-s gall g-o-l-l and then also, I would say anything by John um, John Paul Jackson, who has now passed, but uh, he's the dream guru, <laughs> Holy Spirit guru. Oh, I shouldn't use the word guru. <laughs> Sorry, we'll get comments about that. Uh, uh, you know, he had, um, John Paul Jackson had his whole, what did they call that? Like dream interpretation, and, uh, but they, they have a name for it his courses but john paul jackson you can get on amazon and look i bet you can get on johnpauljackson.com or something mm-hmm. or just google his name anything by john paul will be amazing and there's an old old book i don't even know it's still in print mm-hmm. but i'll i'll tell you this book is what mentored me in dreams uh and it was a uh, hippo in the garden by james ryle I've heard, like, I've heard you talk about that or I, something. Man, I don't even know if it's in print anymore. In the that I learned how, uh, I learned ab- about dreams. I never had dreams before I read that book. Yeah, I read that book like, and I said to the Lord, Lord, give me the same kind of uh, experiences that James uh, Ryle's having. And he, uh, and I started having the same experiences. Well, and James uh, passed like two years ago, but that's a great book. Um, again, it's really old, but it's a great book. So mm-hmm. those three authors, I think, are all really good on dream interpretation. Yeah, and amazing. Dream, have, yeah. Someone keeps streams ministry. Is that maybe streams? Like, that's it. Streams ministry. Thank you so much. I was trying to. I knew it was a common kind of acronym. Yeah, streams. Amazing. Well. That concludes our live Q&A session we love for you. this week. We love you guys. I love you more than she does. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. It's a competition. Here really. we go. <laughs> you want to pray? Yeah, pray Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing on uh, all of these folks that we kind of have a little bit of a mentoring relationship with. We mm-hmm. ask your blessing on them. We pray for this to be a, a supernatural week, but, uh, but a week of blessing, a week of increase, a week of taking new territory, a week of risk and reward. And, and we do really do say yes and amen to everything you're doing here on the earth, Lord. And we, we bless mm-hmm. these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Bless Thanks for hanging guys. with us.